This is the Home Server Show, episode number 253, recorded on February the 25th, 2014. Welcome back to the Home Server Show. I'm your host, David McCabe. Got a nice crew with me tonight. We're welcoming back a stranger, and we're going to be talking Windows Server 2012 Essentials R2, hereby known in the rest of the show as R2. We'll just say either 2012 or R2, so we don't have to spew that long uh, icy doc of a nomenclature of a name. But uh, uh, welcome back, my co-host in crime, Mr. Jim Collison. I hope Tuesday is going to start uh, being yeah. okay for you. It took me a while to get everything moved from uh, off of Wednesdays when we when we started doing Wednesdays, and, and I had to arrange everything, and I got all set, and then you threw me a curveball by going to Tuesdays. <laughs> we just, so, we did... Uh, you know, we did Thursdays for the longest time. Then yeah. I moved us to Wednesdays. Now I've moved us to Tuesdays. And uh, uh, yeah. I thought it, this week you were off, Jim. No, next next week. No. Is next week? I'm here two week weeks. Shindig? And then next week. Yeah, well, the big shindig is this weekend, so that won't affect uh, Okay. That When's won't the affect actual me. date? It was last night, actually. It was the 25th. Last the 24th. Night. Yep. So, so I will announce that Mr. Jim Carlson is celebrating his 25th year of uh, wedded bliss yeah. to Mrs. Collison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, this is average guy. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. Good. So it's good to uh, be back. Podcasting hasn't uh, hasn't no, not hurt yet. the family yet. Well, so we're it's not let's not get carried away. But <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> not maybe yet. stressed it, just not broken it. Not quite yet. No, we're getting a few in, I, and and we'll get we'll get the Tuesday routine figured out this summer and uh, get back on track. We'll get it. Also, welcome back, Mr. Johnny Z. He is die harder in the forums. John Zadler, how you doing tonight? Hey, guys, doing good. Thanks for uh, bringing me on today. You bet. Anytime we talk home server stuff, you, you can guarantee Mr. Zadler is going to be there. And also, Christopher Courtney, I, I called you in because we, we just can't get enough of essentials and DNS and domains and all that kind of good stuff. How are you doing tonight, sir? Uh, great. Great to be back. And plus, I just love looking at that big uh, dryer tube hanging out by your head. It just looks so <laughs> Space Odyssey-ish. Yeah, like remnants of my old setup from a couple years back. What's yeah, I always think he's on the IIS, you know, in the space station. <laughs> I, see. I always yeah. think Lost in Space, with that robot, you know, yeah. danger. It looks like one of his arms. Warning. <laughs> that's that's so what they hard. use for it. Yeah, that's what they use. But hey, uh, just a reminder, we are a, a member of the Geeks Network. Head out to thegeeksnetwork.com for more quality podcasts just like this one. And uh, don't forget those past episodes. We've got a lot of great stuff for you that we've recorded. Just head out there to homeservershow.com. Click the podcast link at the top. It's going to list every single home server show for you to listen right there in your web browser. Uh, you can go out to YouTube and uh, watch the video there or you can uh, subscribe. There's RSS feeds to everything there, so that should take care of everything. Now, guys, I, I probably should give you a little update. The reason why I brought you together tonight, there's always a reason, a madness behind everything. I've started playing a lot more. I've, I kind of told you in the last couple of weeks, I pulled out my, uh, my, desk, my old desktop. It was doing nothing but sitting downstairs I would remote desktop to it because it was comfortable to me, right? That desktop layout was comfortable to me, and I would use the FTP. I would crunch the MP3, and then I would exit. And it would sit down there burning the midnight oil. And, you know, I have it on pure power 24-7. Never sleeps. I don't like it to sleep. And I thought, you know, this is just such a waste, such a waste. And I had all this hardware in there, this great hardware, 16 gigs of RAM, and I thought, you know, this would be great for an essential server. I need to get into essentials, because we've been talking about it more and more, and I, I feel kind of guilty that I haven't done it, and I thought, you know, I've got this uh, N54L right behind me, I thought, I'll just do it on that, and I thought, you know, I'm going to put all this time and effort into it, and I'm going to want to keep it. And I'm going to want to do a little more crunching than that Atom, process, Atom processor is going to give me. So I've got it loaded on this Core i7. I pulled the video card out, and I don't know if you guys saw the tweet, but I had this double height, huge, mongous video card. I had no business whatsoever doing inside of a... It was uh, just like idling, yeah, uh, never used. Pulling 75 watts just for <laughs> it, you know, no business into a server. 
So I put a, an old uh, 9600. Uh, Chris, you said that, didn't you say somewhere in the forums that you had a, a 9600 GT or GTX, kind of like that? Yeah, that's exactly what's in my server. Yeah, yeah, so that's all I could find. So bam, it's in there. Um, and then I started just gathering hard drives, and I started using ports and gathering ports. And I'm lucky that this thing had eight ports, eight SATA ports. And I ended up, two of them I'm not using because it was some weird Asus BIOS thing where it wanted to do the mirror for you or bond them for you in the BIOS, and I didn't want any part of that. So I got six ports rolling. And I'm going to add some more, but, you know, I started throwing everything together, and before I knew it, I have a nine terabyte drive pool. And, you know, I really wasn't even trying. I was just throwing hard drives in, just throwing hard drives. I, um, I downloaded StableBit, uh, StableBit drive pool and StableBit scanner, and I put it in there. And I scanned all my drives, so all the surfaces are nice and cleaned off. It doesn't really clean them off, but, you know, it checks them all. Everything's green. Everything's good to go. And it's just sitting down there. And it's really it's really rocking and rolling. And I put uh, two SSDs as OS, so I'm mirroring. I did a software mirror, guys. I didn't do a hardware mirror. I'm not quite as, uh, as fauché as as, you know, some of you guys. But uh, we did a software mirror, so I at least have some redundancy there. And I'm really wanting to add more ports. So I started looking at my 2011 server. Now, my 2011 server, I have two uh, notebook spinner drives as a mirrored OS. Then I have a, mir a two terabyte mirror as, a, as one pool. I don't, I'm not using drive vendor or uh, stable bit on any of this. I just have a mirror, and then I have a RAID 5 pool. And so I thought, well, let me start pulling off. Let me just use the RAID 5. So I started doing folder moves in Windows Home Server 2011 itself. So, you, you know, you go into the dashboard, and you pick your folder, like pictures. And I would say, move this to the RAID 5 pool. And let me tell you, it, this was taking forever you know we're talking about like 40 to 80 gigs of data and oh it just it grinds and grinds for hours I don't know if it's just me I mean my server is definitely taxed it's taxed beyond its limits I've loaded way too much crap on it over the years it's a great time for me to migrate but it's slow it's very slow it feeds files great it, you know the, the RAID 5 feeds files great but moving all this stuff around is, is just really killing me. So I finally got that done. I've Everything is completely off of this 2 terabyte mirror that I have. So I'm going to power that thing down, pull, pull the SATA card out, and pull those two drives out and see where I can stick those into this server. And I'll be honest with you, I really like this server. I don't really know what I'm getting into yet, you know, because I haven't truly used every single bit of it. So that's why I've kind of gathered you guys around to, you know, bounce some questions off of you. And we can talk about Essentials and 2011 and and, and that kind of stuff. But uh, I'm really enjoying the box. I've got uh, the app on my Surface. I've got the app on my Windows phone, which I think is really cool. You can manage it that way. And... What I want to do, uh, Drashna, Christopher Courtney, Mr. Stablebit, is I want to use an SSD as like the landing zone. You know, when we last talked, we talked about Stablebit being able to use an SSD as like a, a landing zone. And I, I don't know where to find that yet, but that's what I want to do. I want to use it. And that's kind of where I'm at. I'm kind of sitting with two servers. So now let me... Let me set the stage for the discussion, and let me let me start with John. John, give me a little update on what you're running and kind of where you're at. 
Sure. Well, I'm uh, my dedicated or my production box, I could say. But you know, production is a bad word because I still <laughs> I still smack it around. You know, I do I still too. That's throw some stuff on there. You know, that's but, why I think mine is real sluggish because <laughs> it's just like ah, I need to convert some media from WTV to you know MP4. Okay, throw it on there. Yeah, so that's it. So my my main box that I'm using is 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 an old microserver EX470, but I got the um, I I put a BE2300 the dual uh, dual core, which is you know old school stuff. It's like you know it's like a keyboard, you know, clack clack clack. You know, it's like old school that computer that server. But anyway, it runs well, and uh, but I, and uh, with the help of uh, Chris, I made an Active Directory. I have you know. Uh, the, uh, Windows appointment services, everything there. When my computers die and I have to reboot the OS, I just reboot F10. It goes to my my Windows Home Server version one, pulls the uh, the the back of the images. I don't have to make the CD thing, nothing like that. It's all it's it's running all nice and smooth. But it's a little bit slow. And lately, I've been uh, playing around with the uh, I've been beta testing the uh, iHome Server. Uh, uh, the guy over at the Biz Modeler, he was on. Uh, you got to check out. Um, he was on uh, BYOB. Yeah. Yeah, the podcast. Now that's there. that's an iTunes kind of equivalent server for Windows Home Server, right? Yeah, it's like it works in parallel with iTunes. Basically, it's because uh, you know the i the iTunes ecosystem is you know you put iTunes and then you have your iTunes hardware and all of that, and and that all works great. But when you try to use iTunes in a Windows environment, let's say you have a tablet or your TV is DLNA, which which uh, iTunes doesn't support like the DLNA. So his 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 software it kind of like works on top of iTunes and then it it makes your uh, your software all your uh, you know it gets all the cover art and all that stuff for your your non-purchased uh, let's say you ripped some uh, files and stuff like that you didn't buy them from the Apple store so it gets all the metadata it tags it, it gets the cover art and all that stuff so that now you can see it on any DLNA compliant device which now most TVs ship with uh, you know you know they're not they don't ship with Apple like built-in stuff some of them do but mostly by default is DLNA stuff so uh, that's how uh, that's how I've been uh, playing with that stuff. And what happens is, you remember Twonky Media when you would go it would index all your files. The CPU would go. It, it was it was crazy because when you set up the server and one of the first things it did is with your Twonky Media, uh, you know, started and it put the CPU to the maximum. And then your, your computer is like, it's, you know, and you're trying to co copy files to your computer. It, it's you know, it's 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 a bad experience. It's too slow. But at least iHome server, he like it takes a while. I find I have thousands of records, you know, mm -hmm. it takes a while to get the stuff to index it, but it's not like putting your CPU really high. So uh, I've been playing around with that, and I'm having a good time with that one. And that's on my v uh, version one, and then the uh, the other one I'm running is Small Business Server, uh, yeah, Small Business Server 2011, but the Essentials version on uh, N40L. So that's domain and all that stuff, but that's all built in. That's not like hacked up there. So that's built in and that's running on my uh, on the microserver N40. Uh, but that's like I turn it up, I play around with it. I have stable bit running on there with a couple of uh, three terabyte drives in the pool and and uh, that, that's like I said, that's running okay. But my main box is the is the 470. Okay. Okay. I could actually remote desktop into this beast if we needed to. I'm right now. I'm I have an RDP into my 2011. I don't know why I'm not jumped into the to the other one. Um. Now, Jim, I'm scared to ask you. You're Why? still Why you're you still scared? on 2011, right? I am a 2011 guy, yeah. I but I know I, you're doing some on. you're doing some stuff in the cloud, and I am. So I, I do have a an R2 instance on Azure right now. Uh, mm -hmm. John and I, John Zadler and I, mess around with it from time to time. We haven't messed with it in the last couple weeks, and uh, with a MSDN subscription, you know, you get a hundred dollars of uh, Azure credit every single month. That uh, and a lot of people don't know that if they're they're in MSDN and they don't know they get that uh, that you can get a lot of server for a hundred bucks on Azure. So yeah, we have we have a R2. I think uh, at its lowest setting, it cost me about uh, three dollars a day maybe to keep that server running. No, it can't be that that expensive. It's cheaper than that. And uh, the next server level up, which is like a dedicated single core, a 1.5 gig of RAM is like $60 a month, something like that, to run that server out there. I'd have to go back and double-check it. But it's not terribly expensive if you just wanted to run. You know, the, the big drawback to it is there's no backup. You, it's not, you can't do PC backup. No, no bare metal restore from your instance that's on, on Azure. So it, for, for okay. some people who think, so you oh, can't, 
you can't send a backup out there. No, you can't. You can't. You can. You can try. There's some. There's some ways guys have tried to get around that. But right now, they're not supporting any bare metal backup on Azure. But if you were just for file storage, you could do a lot of things out there, even some virtualization. So it it uh, it's very very slick. And I, I don't consider myself to be a you know, a very advanced uh, cloud user, and I was able to get it running and set up just with the instructions that Microsoft provides you. In fact, I set up my first instance of it while we were at the MVP summit during a session. <laughs> during a session, I know. <laughs> that was so, fun. Yeah, not, not particularly hard. So I do that, and then right behind me now is running my home instance of, uh, of R2 that I kind of use when I need to get things running here. And uh, that is, uh, that's got a couple... Um, you know, I've got a, a, a two different raids in there. I've got the board raid that's running in a raid zero for on three um, Velociraptors, uh, 10,000 RPM drives in it. So that's super fast. And then I've got three one terabyte Western Digital drives that are on a raid uh, raid. I'm sorry, raid zero for the data drive. And those things are super fast. So that's not the greatest drive to use for a raid zero for that configuration. But you know what? They work. They're green drives. Yeah. And they work. So I put in, um, God, what did I put in? A couple of two terabyte blacks. I think I could a couple of three terabyte reds. Now what I tried to not to do was mix in a green. I do have a green in there, but it's sitting all by itself. I think I'm gonna have to look. Um, I don't think that yeah. I put it in the Dave, pool. Dave, green and three red green. are the opposites of the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did three greens, and I've been running them now for a couple months, and not no issues. They're fast. I get just you know they're a little bit slower than those uh, 10,000 RPM um, Velociraptors that are in there, but they work. They work great. I get really good data speeds, and uh, we're running. You know, I do a lot of Hyper V on it, and and they work great. So that's been a good story. Yeah, no, you know, if I had three greens, like, yeah, I would throw them in. I'm not saying I wouldn't use them. I'm yeah. just saying I had these 7200 drives, and I wanted to use those. And then, of course, the reds, I think they're 5400. They're not actually 7200s, but I put all those together, and I was thinking I was going to use this 2 terabyte green maybe as my recorded TV drive because right now we have an entire 2 terabyte drive in my 2011 instance that's completely full of Olympics recordings. Mm. And so I don't want to get in trouble and delete those. <laughs> Wife might want to watch some bobsledding. I don't know. She might yeah. want to watch some Canadian hockey. Oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she would be hey, like, Dave. huh? Yeah. She wouldn't get that. Dave, I... Hey, congrats um, on the gold. You, you're making... Thank you. Uh, you're making me think about my uh, my PC here. I, I'm I... Uh, <clears throat> I have a 60 gig SSD. Uh, I forget who's making it there. Uh, Corsair, I think. And for my for my TV drive, my recorded TV, I said, you know, I'm not going to put it on the SSD. I don't want to kind of prematurely wear it out. So I put in a spindle drive. I had a laptop drive in there, and then I said, you know what, I want to use that laptop drive for something else. So I put in a one terabyte, you know, uh, a full size, three and a half inch, one terabyte green drive. And every once in a while, you know, I hear click. <laughs> then like, it goes. Oh my and then, God! Come on. Click. Yeah. I just want to throw it. <laughs> come so on. So I think that laptop drive is going uh, back in there. So that's hilarious. But if you if you have them in the server, the server's like over there, and it but it's it's when it's next to you, and you hear that thing powering up and going down. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. All right, I need to get to Christopher. Uh, Mr. Drashna in the forums, tell me, I mean, what do you have? Some kind of enterprise rack <laughs> behind you there? Uh, actually, it's in front of me, and it's a Norco 4220 uh, 4U case with um, there's an, an AMD 8120 CPU, 8-core. So okay. it's definitely a beast. Yeah. You're yeah, on the yeah. wrong podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, it's only half-filled. <laughs> so running a Norco. Anybody says they're running a Norco, just just turn around and run. Just run for your life. Uh, now, uh, what kind of storage are you, are you running in that thing? Uh, West um, Seagate uh, drives all of them. Full of Seagates. How much? How, what's your pool? Uh, I think it was 24 terabytes last I looked. Uh, is it stable bit or? Oh, naturally. Naturally. Okay. 
Okay, so I, I'm sorry that we took the time to get that, but let's let's jump into it. Why? I just want to maybe go around the room. Why would I want to? I'll start with Drashna. Why would I want to run Essentials if I have a 2011 instance running? Uh, management for one, uh, the domain management, so it's significantly easier to control all the client PCs. Uh, the other reason is when uh, the 2011 does still have some issues with uh, backing up Windows 8 and 8.1. It does. Well, I, what if what if this domain stuff scares me? Ah, uh, that's understandable. It's it's definitely a lot different and can be a lot more pl complex than a standard workgroup uh, environment, but it's not really that much more complex. Uh, you can make it much so, but uh, mm -hmm. the biggest difference is you authenticate against the domain controller instead of on the local computer, but you can also still log into local computer accounts, um, but you can also push out like security policies to the um, client PCs. Uh, for example, like the uh, CryptoLocker uh, Prevention Kit has a security policy and you can set that up in the domain controller and then have that be pushed to each and every single one of the client machines. Okay. Okay. Well, let me give you what I did. I, I set it up as a domain controller. I didn't fuss with it. I didn't change anything on the fly. I let it install, and then I took my Surface Pro 2, and I removed it from the 2011 connector, removed it, rebooted, and then I jumped right into... Um, right in, I, it's called Geek Server, and so I jumped into Geek Server, which is a domain controller, and it, I thought it was going to be a little faster of a process, but after I rebooted, you know, it had to configure all this stuff to do to jump on the domain, and then I should have captured the screens, but I really didn't capture anything. But I remember getting to a point where it wanted me to log on, and then it asked, you know, what credentials do you want to use, and I told it. I just want to use my Windows Live ID, right? I just want it to be like normal. Mm -hmm. And so I told it that, and it logged right on, and I see no difference. You know, there was nothing scary on my desktop. There was nothing scary happening. And, you know, there were points where I would turn the server off. I would turn off the domain controller completely, and then I'd still use the Surface. I can, pull, I can undock it. I log in with my Live ID. Has no idea that the domain controllers. I'm I'm sure it does behind the scenes, but to me, forward facing, it doesn't throw out errors. It doesn't do anything crazy. Yeah, uh, whatsoever. Uh, and even if you're logged into a domain account, uh, it'll cache those credentials on the machine. So even if the domain controller is not available, you'll still be able to log in without any issues. Okay. Now I say all this because. When Essentials 2012 first came out, I wasn't a big fan of this whole domain controller thing. And, you know, all these guys started using the uh, the workgroups uh, workaround, which I thought, if I ever load this, that's what I'm going to do. You know, I'm going to, I'm definitely working around this because I do not want a domain controller. I just, you know, I was dead set on that. And now that I'm running it, no big deal. Now, let me tell you, the point that you first made is backing up Windows 8 clients and Windows 8.1 clients. My Surface Pro 2 is now backed up on that essential server where it would not on the 2011 server because Drashna? I'm guessing it, because it's an EFI board. The UEFI board. I think you said that a couple of podcasts ago, but I was going to see if I could catch you off guard. But uh, yeah, you know, some of these new laptops running UF, UEFI BIOS and boot, they're not going to back up to your old 2011. You're not going to be able to restore. You may be able to get a backup, but you might not be able to get like all those different partitions, right? Mm -hmm. Well, they got the patch, right? There's the three patches out for well, 2011. They, there is a patch for it, but even with the patch, a lot of people I've seen still have issues getting it to even back up. I've uh, seen that. Hmm. I've seen that personally. I saw it with. Uh, I didn't even try with the Surface. I, I didn't even try. Uh, you know, to me, it's a tablet at at most. So I have that recovery USB. 
uh, I saw it with a, a yoga laptop. I had the hardest time backing up that yoga laptop. So uh, I've yet to put that on uh, Essentials, but I, I can't wait to try that to see if I can actually back up uh, that Lenovo uh, yoga. Yeah, it should definitely work a lot better with that. I, I, I hope. Uh, Dave, I know there was something weird. Uh, my brother bought a um, uh, what is it there? The the Dell Venue Eight, and like when you do the restore, I, I don't know. It's some some kind of command. You have to like sort of hold the power button or something to be able to get like a boot screen, like a DOS boot screen. To get and those then, tablets to like look at the look at the USB port first. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, to do something. Yeah, yeah. There was, to load the, guy, the, um, the settings, the boot manager setting yeah. stuff. So you can yeah. actually boot it to a different device. Yeah. 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 There's my uh, my boot manager. It's a little eight gig stick. You know, it says SP2, which is Surface Pro 2. So that's my my fallback, hopefully. But you know, I'm backed up, so I feel good about that. Mm -hmm. Now, there's one other thing that that I would mention that something that I didn't like about the whole process, and that is the change of client DNS. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, I personally don't have an issue with that uh, because I've been used to running a domain controller for a while mm -hmm. and my DHPC server hands out all that stuff naturally so it, the services don't auto-config that stuff. doesn't change the settings at all. So I'm going to be in that camp that I don't like it. I have a router. I've had a router dispense DHCP addresses and DNS addresses for my entire life, right? That's what I'm used to. <laughs> That's what I like. And I understand there's two different camps. Some folks say if DHCP doesn't come off the server, it's wrong, right? You know, a router's a router. It shouldn't be handing out IP addresses, which I totally agree on that camp. But for me, I was like, you know, I'm going to change this back. So there is, um, when you do load this and you jump on the domain, DNS comes from the domain controller. You can do uh, run a command box, do IP config all, and you can see your DNS will be your server, 192.168.0. You know, whatever your private IP address is. And... It's somewhere in our forums. I'll have to find a link. Uh, the guys, uh, Drashna, you and uh, Paul Brerin and a lot of these uh, 2012 Essentials guys have all these workarounds, and one of them is the DNS uh, registry entry. So it's just a simple registry entry, and it was it was once thought that you had to do that entry in the middle of the client connector install. Wasn't that right? Uh, I believe that's what has been said, but yeah, it, it, as long as you do it any time before the setup completes, it should be fine. Um, I've, yeah, I've, yeah I've, and I, you know, I did it now, and everything's fine. Uh, so I installed my connector, and then I just ran a command line, or I mean, regedit, and made the made the connection reboot, and I'll I'll just check it real real quick. Yeah. IP config slash all. And I'm trying to find it. Yeah, I can get it cluttered up there. But uh, like I have my DHPC server handing out the um route the server as its primary DNS server, and then the router as a secondary. Yeah, and it's right here. DNS servers are actually I use I'm using Open DNS, so I can see my 208.67.222.222. 220.220, I know that that came from my router. So, Yeah. Uh, but I personally prefer having my server do the DNS because as part of a domain, it relies on a number of the more advanced features of the DNS server to be able to properly connect. Uh, so without it, you won't be able to connect to the domain controller properly. Okay. Which is why it does the auto config thing to make to ensure that it can find the server. Right. Yeah, I I figured that, and I figure a lot of the domain people are just cringing right now. That I'm I'm not recommending this. I'm just saying it can be done until I'm comfortable with it. 
until I want to, you know, if I'm going to move to it, fine, I'll move to it. And I'll probably just put DHCP back on the server and just run it like that. Well, it can be on either location as long as the DNS is on the server. True, as long as, um, as, long as client computers can talk to yeah. domain controller, then, then we're good. And you can also set up the DNS server on the server to look to open DNS for um, the DNS forwarders. That way, if it when it doesn't find something that's local that it has, it goes out to that instead. Okay, and that would that would make me happy to give me a little bit of a little security feeling that OpenDNS might find some bad people and and not let me go to a website, perhaps. Yeah. Okay, I would feel good about that. So I was I was in my dashboard. I've got two point seven terabyte, two point seven terabyte and a 1.8 terabyte and a 1.8 terabyte and then I have a 9 terabyte drive pool so as my H drive so I didn't load that green drive so I, I was trying to figure out did I load that or not so I'm really just kinda of playing around I don't have any data on it but it was it was kinda of weird how I get I get a little freaky when it starts coming to data right so I started with the with the 2011 server and I, I made this conscious decision that okay I'm gonna remove some of my points of failure right I'm gonna get it all onto my RAID 5 and which I have backups and stuff and I thought I'm gonna start moving data around so I got real weird about it right I thought okay I better back this up first yeah, so we, that's what we tell people before you move your data around I better back this up first and then you know I came to kind of came to my senses. I was like, Dave, you have two backups in the house. You have the data on the drives, and you have two physical backups in the house, and then you have two backups on two different cloud services. And so I had to kind of just tell myself, calm down. It's okay to move some data from one pool to another pool, you know, if anything goes bad, I think I've got you covered. So, uh, in my my weird state, I, I did have to go check and verify that all those files were there, all those backups were good. But uh, um, well, there's no such thing as too many backups. I mean, it might get more expensive, but better to have too many than well, find out that you don't have enough. Yeah, true, true. And actually, I have three cloud services. I have I have it all on Crash Crash Plan. I have it all on uh, my DrivePop Live Drive, and I have most of it on copy.com, most of it on copy.com. So um, I had to just tell myself, it's okay. You can move things around. You're not going to crater. You know, it's going to be okay. Um, John, I know you're, you've popped back in. We just finished talking about DNS and domains, and now... I want to move towards this is this is a business server. This is not 2011. I can't just like things have things have gotten serious once you install this because you can't install some software packages on this. Let's say you buy an antivirus package off the shelf. You stick it in, you try to load it and it's going to go. I can't install on that because that is a server, quote unquote. So you've instantly jumped up into that business class. There, there might be some software packages you run across that don't work. Have, have you seen that in any of your uh, tinkering there? Yeah, well, like you said, as far as the virus, some of the some virus protection, you know, like you said, some some suites you you know you figure you get a, a vast for free, or these guys or that guy for free, and then you want to put it on your server, and it's not going to work. So. Yeah, you know, you you've moved in, like you said, you moved into another bracket, and uh, you know, maybe don't play around with that. You know. Yeah, yeah. Just be prepared. You know, it. I would say maybe we'll do a little homework uh, before. You know, just completely saying, "Hey, I'm going to move from 2011 into Essentials." You know, just because possibly you have an MSDN subscription, or you you know want a license, or you you want to actually pay the 400 bucks. We haven't even talked about that yet. 
Yeah, and sometimes the other issue is drivers. You know, if you have a raid card or whatever, and then you or a printer, and you know, sometimes you go online and you especially, you know, I mean, printer is not so bad if it's on like your local network and you can connect with wirelessly. But when you connect it to your right directly to the server, and you know, you know, you might need some drivers for the printer, or like I said, maybe raid cards or uh, some guys, you know, in the forums with their uh, and and um, or the Gen 8s, you know, they're they're trying to you know P222 card, and it's like, well, there's this firmware and this and that, and it doesn't support, you know. So sometimes you can run into those little problems. Yeah, so do your homework before you uh, if you're going to play around with some different uh, software. Yeah, and uh, you know some of the stuff that we find like near and dear to our heart because all, all these home server guys and me included, we like our movies, right? We like to stream stuff. And things things are different. Now, I haven't, like, loaded Plex. I don't even know if that loads or not. Oh, I Plex needed... definitely loads on R2. Okay. <laughs> That's yeah. good. See, I needed... I was That was going to be one of the things I was going to have to look at. Now, one thing I do know that, that loads, and, John, you and I are talking about doing a show on it in the, in the future, is, is my movies, right? Yeah, that's right. They're uh, now they've they've just uh, came out with version five, which they're kind of like well, the preview. Well, he's working on a version five, and there's a preview out, and basically it's going to be like all together is the uh, the desktop and the uh, server uh, package is going to be together. So if you install it on, the, you'll you'll just inst you'll run the installer, and then they'll say, are you putting it on a server or uh, on a PC, and uh, away you go. So yeah, it does support uh, Windows Home Server 2011 and and the uh, and R2. Which is uh, which is pretty good because there's they added some extra functionality so that'll work and even like this one that I was playing around with I'm testing out the iHome server there's a version for uh, for R2 and 2011 so uh, yeah you know if you get these boxes and then they also you know the, the, those servers basically if you're gonna go with that OS you know you probably have a you know chances are you're you're putting on a, a bit of a beefy box and and uh, 2012 supports like I think uh, two CPUs and you know more memory and stuff like that so it has some extra functionality that you're paying for in the software so you know if you you know if you ha you know if you have a good hardware to go with it especially with the stream well not really streaming but more for um uh, converting their uh transcoding you know, like like uh, Tony Rayner was talking about how he has a lot of files, and especially again now my movies, right? My movies can uh, transcode into I think two formats. So uh, and then yeah, once you, you even put a, audio, yeah. Once you put a disc in, it'll rip. I have it doing that. I have it rip into a folder and then dropping an MP4 into a different folder. Yeah. So if you have a bunch of transcoding going on in the background, you know you're gonna want maybe an you know an i like he he Tony went up to an i7. He went from I think an i3 or i5 to an i7. So he can you know take advantage of that. So you know when you kind of bring that all in with the uh, server 2012 uh, R2. Essentials, then uh, that might be uh, something good. But then the thing is, you have to also remember they, they took out the the media sort of like package. And you have to kind of go on online and download that little uh, uh, media pack, or just install Plex or Subsonic. Yeah, because yeah. the media is a bit like you know, uh, like uh, I wouldn't really suggest uh, how you know getting in through the web interface and kind of getting in that way. But yeah, flex flex works. Uh, flex is flex. Flex flex is pretty flexible. <laughs> I got I got flex running on my uh, on my version one box and and it's pretty good because uh, I actually have uh, you know a Wii U. You know one of those guys there, the Wii U, and I'm running you know this this has an internet browser on there. So with this guy, uh, you know through here you can go to the internet. You can go to a browser. You can load up Plex. A load fine, and then you can play to this device or you can you know say okay play to my big screen. You know and away you go. So Plex is a uh, pretty universal, and then obviously you have the apps on the on the mobile devices. And right. also, John was saying something about the um, hardware limits for the R2. It supports up to two physical CPUs and up to 64 gigs of RAM. So it's you it can take a lot. Yeah, that's uh, that's quite a mess of RAM. Um, hey, before I move on. Before I do anything else, I want to uh, do a little do a little ad for you. Nice, quick, simple ad. But I want to tell you that this episode is brought to you by. We have a brand new store on HomeServerShow.com. It is the uh, what I call the Gen 8 Mod Store. Now I put a post in the forums, but you've heard us talking about uh, uh, Schoondog in the forums has this uh, Microserver Gen 8 
uh, bracket that you can put a couple of extra drives on. I'm holding it here for the guys on video. Now, we have a brand new store on homeservershow.com where you can order this bracket. You can order the CD-ROM or the DVD bay bracket. You can order extra screws, and uh, there's probably more stuff coming from, from these guys. But um, uh, if you go out to homeservershow.com forward slash schoon, so that's S-C-H-O-O-N, but I'll put a link out there for everybody to, to recognize. But you can buy... Uh, this and it is in where did I put that? I put it somewhere out there. I, I thought I put it in deals, but I probably show.com slash schoon slash schoon. <laughs> I think I put it in uh, the Gen 8 forum itself. So, yeah, there it is. The HP Gen 8 modification store is now live. That is in the forums, and I'll put a link uh, in the show notes. So, if you own a Gen 8, get out there to the schoon store. And buy one of these and support those guys that uh, mod. Support Kevin, uh, all his efforts of modding the box and, and trying to improve uh, the community. So, gives a little thanks, Bax. Yeah, great little box. Uh, you know, Mike uh, HP did a nice job uh, reorganizing that box compared to the Gen 7. You know, it's easier to you know slap memory in. You're not taking the box. You just take the cover off and you can get to it on the side. And it's, it's uh, they, they did a lot. Nice, nice advantages using that box, and and here you go. And you know, when you thought you would have no more room to put anything else, here we go. We have a bracket that you can you know slap two more drives on. There. Yeah, and I I found that I put that in the wrong. I need, I'm moving that to the Gen 8 uh, forum topic, so it'll be in the uh, HP Marker server. There's a Gen 8 section, and I will uh, I will try to I'm gonna pin that so it'll always be at the top. You'll be able to find that in the forum. So. Um, okay, so if we continue down our road, why would I want to move? Uh, I've, we've kind of gotten some pros and cons. We can, uh, you, you got to deal with domain controllers and DNS changes, and but you can back up your, your, your newer laptops and your newer tablets. Um, yeah, you also have that option where uh, if you if you're using a uh, well MSN, MSDN, we get that uh, that option there. What's that? Uh, uh, Intune. And then uh, you know you could because you know before people didn't add like tablets and stuff as like because um, you can back up device you know they call it devices it's not just PCs it's like devices but you can also put your um, like let's say you have your you know your Surface even though you're not going to back it up to the to the to the server you might still want to you know uh, allocate an, a uh, Office 365 account to it and Office 365 is built in you know to uh, R2. So now you can allocate the keys to there, and then you can also uh, lock the device. You you can uh, your device will show up into uh, you know in the dashboard. You'll see devices, and then like let's say in the corporate wise, because that's what the OS is for, right? So you know in the corporate wise, if somebody stole your your device and now you're connected to the corporate network to get files and stuff, now you can lock the device out, or you can you can remotely uh, uh, erase the device. So uh, so that's a nice option to do that. Okay. I was trying to, for the video, I was trying to do a screen share and that didn't work whatsoever. Um, any more cons that I'm missing besides maybe some higher software titles? Oh, one that I thought of, uh, it's not necessarily a con, but I run Cloudberry software, right? And Cloudberry Backup for 2011 is cheaper than Cloudberry Backup for, you know, Essentials. So, you know, there's a $50 difference in there. So you kind of have to, if you run Cloudberry, there's one of those software titles that the, there, there's a sheer difference. Yeah, a lot of the software that for the R2 tends to be a little more expensive because it is geared more for small businesses. Mm -hmm. Any other cons that I'm missing, Drashna? Uh, other than the, um, if you have computers connected to the domain and you end up needing to reinstall the domain controller. That's bad. Okay, so if my if my essentials box dies, and you don't have a good backup for it, then basically you have to wipe the domain. It's you reinstall the domain controller. Uh, all the clients have to leave the domain and rejoin it. And when you leave the domain, it wipes out the domain user accounts on those computers. That's messy. 
That's why you want to make sure you have a good backup. <laughs> yeah. So and I, need I've, be, I need to be able to bare metal back up this thing? Yes. Yeah, definitely. And when um, you say r erases the domain account, so like a laptop that's on the domain, if it joins, does it use like... It, it retains the, any of the local accounts on there. Okay. Uh, and you can still access those even if it's do joined to the domain. But when you leave the domain, it I don't believe it actually deletes the actual files, but it does remove the user account, so you can't log into it anymore. Okay. You can't so, just take a take a laptop and leave a domain and be a happy camper. Uh, depends on what you mean by leave. If you mean leave the network, you yes, you can. But if you leave the domain, it removes the domain user accounts. Okay, so if I uninstall my connector off of my Surface Pro 2, let's say I don't like, I don't like this. I'm going back to 2011. What happens mm -hmm. when I uninstall that connector? Well, uh, the connector will uninstall, but they'll still be part of the domain. Okay. And you'll want to basically go in the system properties and then leave the domain, convert to a work group again. Okay, and so anything I created on that account that domain account, if it was like saving anything on the server and pulling that into my profile, or is that what we're talking about? Uh, no, anything that sort of user profile settings that were on that computer specifically. Okay. Like if you have like Outlook set up with all the accounts and stuff, you'll lose that information. Uh, you should still be able to access the PST files, but like the settings and that will be gone. Okay, that sounds it's a little messy. It, it is, which is, again, why you want to make sure you have a good backup of your server. Okay, so... What, okay. Yeah, and I also think there's something about the, your history file. Uh, is it history file or... Because your computer, like, one of the things when you install it to the domain, it creates the... Uh, uh, what is that thing in the Windows 8 they usually talk about it? There. The file it's, history backup? Yeah, file history backup. So, you know, like um, versioning, right? You can go and get the old files and stuff. That's usually copied to the to the server. So uh, yeah. I know sometimes if a server's off or uh, or if I disconnect from the domain or whatever, then I get, it says, oh, one of the warnings come up, the little flag comes up and says, hey, you know, I can't get to the stuff there. Hmm. Yeah. But okay, yeah, so uh, do I need a backup domain to controller? Does is that thing, does that still work? Uh, the servers? recommended... By Microsoft solution is having a secondary domain controller as a backup domain controller. However, for home, that's obviously not going to be a viable solution. It's a little overkill. Mm -hmm. Well, it requires you to to purchase a standard edition, uh, which is significantly more expensive. So you can't run two essential servers. Nope. Nice. Okay, but I, I can't imagine anybody wanting to do that anyway. So okay. How, how do I solve this problem? I need a bare metal backup of this thing, and I need it fast. Windows, Windows Server Backup. It's built in. Okay. And where do I back that up to? Uh, an external hard drive or an internal if you won't really want to, but it's based, the Server Backup feature that's in 2011, that's what it uses, and the same thing is there in uh, R2. Okay. So what do I... Let's say my OS craters, both of my mirror drives, just completely crater. How do I boot this thing up? Uh, you boot the install disk. Uh, it should have a server recovery option. And then uh, it loads into that. Right. And, then, yeah, it'll see, it should see the drive, and then you just restore to the new disk. Okay. I've been in that. I'm goofing around. I was like, what's this? And... Uh, because you can back up uh, right through the... It's like right in the dashboard, the option to back to the server. Like yeah. When, you know, it'll, it'll throw up some warning saying, you know, there's no hard drive. Come on, guys, set it up. Like, at least yeah, you get nagged about it. Oh, you know? yeah, it, it nags you about there's no server backup set up. Yeah, so. it's, not, it's not happy until you do it. It's going to constantly exactly. flag you, yeah, so... Okay, 
So yeah. you're telling so then, you know you, you don't have to go you know look, look uh, sorry you don't have to go run and hunt for it like where's that option this and that's like dashboard computers and backups you know you have your list of computers and then you see the servers right there and then it's, it's you know it's gonna like we say give you those warnings and then so you'll plug in that drive and then you'll be able to you'll, you'll say okay I'll back up to that but one thing I did notice uh, what did I have a problem on my 2011 boxes I wanted to back that guy up and I think I added uh, Windows deployment services. And it puts some files like on the pool drive. And then when it does the server backup, it's telling me, hey, I want to back up that, that pool. And it's Any like, role that you install, yeah, it wants to back up that as part of the bare metal backup. Yeah, and it's like, I, drive pool I, doesn't gonna, yeah. Yeah, the drive tool doesn't support the VSS, uh, which is what the server backup uses. So, Yeah, so yeah. don't add that role. <laughs> so that, you're telling... Well, you're oh, that, telling go ahead, Chris. The, then R2 does not have the two terabyte limit for the backup. Like you could throw in like a one of the giant pro raid boxes that has like a 12 terabyte uh, array in there and back up your entire server to that. Yeah, I got yeah. one of those sitting in the corner there. <laughs> a little heater. Yeah. Yeah. So you're telling me? Are you are you telling me that a 2011 guy running comfortably now? Could kind of comfy get into this and and back up his server. And you're also telling me, okay, the CD or the DVD that you I booted from, I need to keep that. Or you know me, I have this, I have a piece of tape on a USB stick that says 2012 R2 on it. I need to keep this around, and yeah. and be able to boot from that. Well, you're not booting from the same, let's say, CD that you're using to restore a PC. You're using Correct. your your Windows installs. This CD. is the this is the disk the the yeah. server itself. Yeah. Yeah. So we're moving that and going into recovery. Or if you want to get real fancy, just tape it into the inside of the um case. So I don't. Uh, so you definitely won't lose it. Right. So I definitely won't, don't lose it. Yeah. Um. I got that on my Media Smart server. If you look real close to the sc- the grill screen. You see a USB stick there. Is it, there's <laughs> enough gonna, space between. I would lose it. I'd be like, where did I put it? Oh my god! I would lose it. Um, and then definitely maybe back up to an external drive. Point, yeah. Point point it to an external drive and tell it just just back up my just server only, not my pools, not my data. Yeah, just the the what's required for the bare metal and system state backups. So it sounds like a 2011 guy. I, I can do this. this is, so far, it's not that scary. It costs more, but it's, it doesn't sound that scary. Chris, I have a question. Uh, maybe you have the answer. I'm putting you on the spot there. Um, remember, uh, like people would they would back up their let's say their uh, shares or the PC backups. You know, to, they would you know do the old uh, plug a USB key, uh, a USB drive. You know, and then back up their shares to that, and then you know swap out the drives, come back with other drives. You know, have a Monday, Tuesday. You know, you know what I mean. Rotate yeah. drives off site. And uh, but they changed something, didn't they? With the twenty, with the R two, like isn't it? Uh, I think if you add, you know, you could, you always have to use the same drive to to rotate. Uh, and then I think they did something that if you wanted to have multiple drives, you had to all, you had to have them all start, like put all the drives and then say those are the drives. But then the twenty twelve, yeah. it's like you can dance around. Can you explain that a well, bit? The R two, you have to have all the drives that are going to be used for the backup set connected at the same time. Uh, go, go ahead, Chris. <laughs> but yeah, you have to have, um, when you set up the server backup, you need to have all the drives that you're going to use um, connected, and then you can cycle them out. You can't. I'm fairly certain that you can't just basically add another drive and then set up a new backup. You have to have. Say use this, yeah. So if you want to have several uh, disks to cycle, like off-site or in a safe place or whatever, you have to connect all of them to the server initially when you set up the backup. Okay, so when you, when you set up the backup, you put the drives there, and and what, what is it that you have to do? Like when you say, you have to go through that thing and say, those are the drives, and it's going to say, it's going to give you a list of drives to back up to, or what? Yeah. And then now now when you start taking drives off-site, it's, it, and you, you, you're you going to create an, an, uh, another backup to one of the drives, it's uh, it's going to allow you to pick another driver. It's going to say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm expecting this drive, and I don't see it. Well, uh, you have to have all the drives that are going to use for the backup 
uh, connected at one time when you can set up the backup. Okay. So if you're going to use like three different external hard drives, you need to have all three of them connected, set up the server backup, and ha tell them, tell it that you're going to use all three of these drives for backup, and then you can cycle them out. Okay. So that's that's what's built into now. That was, was well built yeah. in or fixed in on R2. Okay. Okay. Well, the real fix is the larger than two terabyte volume size for um, backups. That no longer has that limit like 2011 does. Which that's yeah. pretty cool. That's pretty cool because you could. If you have a lot of data, yeah. Yeah, well, it was a must for those who were going over two terabytes. I mean, that, it, they were kind of screwed. They were hosed. Or that, or if you use the drive pooling technology, use a secondary pool and manually sure. do that. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, natively, though, they were. And plus, guys that yeah. need to get over 10 PCs. I don't know how you could have 10 in your house, but you, you might have 10 <laughs> in your house that you need to back up. And this, this server goes up to 25. Yep. Yep. So you can support a lot more devices. Yeah, more devices, more stuff. Hey, uh, one one link I'm going to have in the show notes is from uh, uh, another MVP who was listening to one of our shows. We were talking about DNS uh, auto discovery on uh, on essentials, and he wrote a little article and kind of to to help us out to point us where to go and uh, how to make that change. And I will put that in the show notes. Uh, thanks, uh, Robert, for doing that. And, you know, we're, we're, I'm running up against uh, the clock, but I kind of wanted to just throw it out there. Another benefit, and let's talk about it in a new show, is can I run some virtual machines on this beast that I've installed? Uh, <laughs> can, yes. Okay, can or should is a different question. Can, yes. Licensing, not really. Okay. Okay, so if I wanted to VM, like, if I wanted to be, like, hardcore, I would need to, like, start a server and then run Essentials in Hyper-V. Hyper-V 2012 R2 server. Yeah, r start that and then run Essentials inside of that. So basically, everything I've done is just completely wasted. I need to do that into a different... Okay. Hey Dave, uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, another um, bonus for you for you in a home server show uh, um, podcast is uh, there was a I saw a post over at a place called AutomatedHome.co.uk and they're talking about some uh, computers and backups and this and that. And, uh, I don't know if you recall uh, or if you saw this post. He act then he actually has a YouTube video where he's he's pointing back to a home server show where you had uh, uh, I'm not sure what episode that was there, but you had. Um, you had a guest there. What was his name? I, I, I forget. He was talking about the Synology box because these guys are talking about the NAS and Synology and stuff, and he, he points back to your site. Okay, I see so, February 10th um, there's an article. Our, our new home server isn't a server. It's a Synology 1813. Okay. Maybe that's me, what he's talking about. I'll, yeah, I'll give you a uh, – I'll put a link in, the, in, the, in our chat, and you can take a look at that. There you are in the front page. I think you're wearing the same blue shirt. No, that, no, that's your Windows uh, 3.1 shirt or whatever it is, 3% shirt. Oh, that's a yeah. So he did, he did put it out there. Yeah, it's a, no. Tonight I'm in SkyDrive. So yeah. I'm in uh, my collectible. <laughs> my collectible. Yeah, you know I've been to this site before, so uh, I'll have to, uh, I'll have to keep this open and uh, and check him out a little bit more. So. All right, guys. Jim, you were kind of behind the scenes doing all the work on the show notes and stuff. Thanks for a little bit. finding a Tuesday. A little bit, yeah. I'm glad I could add some value tonight. Yeah, I, you know, uh, real quick, I, the the Hyper V. I know there's some, I know there's some licensing issues behind it, but it is for the for the average guy using it. It is it is super simple to set up and super easy to use. And uh, if you if you're trying to if you want to mess around with that and you're in a test environment, like you probably should be anyways. So licensing is kind of a non-issue at that point if you're using this stuff for test purposes, like most of us are. Uh, the Hyper V piece is really, really nice. So that's a that's a it's super easy to use. You can't, I just can't say enough good things about it. It works pretty well. As long as you have two network adapters. Yeah, that, I think that. Yeah, 
yeah. That, that, I think that if you're going to build this box and do RAID and all this other stuff to it, should. yeah, one more network adapter is not going to be is should not be a make or break point for. Well, it having just the one, and if you use the remote access, uh, it will cause issues with the uh, VMs. Yeah. No. True. Yep. But so, in, so to... yep, dual card, dual, dual NIC. Yeah, you'll you'll want to go with it, or two different cards, one of the two. Yeah. I've got I have two two dual NIC cards that are in mine, so I have four, and then a fifth one uh, on the board. So it's it's all right, you know, from that standpoint. But I, I guess I figure if you're going to be building something like this, you're probably going to have that anyway. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Dave, uh, just to let folks know, there uh, over at the Windows Server blog, there. Well, the guy Joe Belfiore, the full Windows Phone guy, mm -hmm. he had mentioned that there's going to be some updates coming up, and one of the updates also includes Server uh, 2012 R2 Essentials update coming this spring. So uh, maybe we'll have some, another little patch. And I think uh, just this, today I saw something for uh, uh, Office 2013 R2 uh, R Office 2013 R2. Service Pack One. Yeah, for RT. Yeah, there's that's supposed to be rolling out now. So we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, in the next hour. So tune in. We're have, going to have a little break here uh, at Home Server Show. We're going to go ahead and ride into Surface Geeks. That's, that's if you are live. If you have downloaded this, thank you very much for downloading and listening to Home Server Show. Again, uh, check us out in the forums and uh, leave me some notes out there. A lot of great links, a lot of good information in the forums. And... Um, don't forget about that new store. There'll be a link in the show notes, uh, homeservershow.com slash schoon. That's S-C-H-O-O-N. And uh, I think we're going to try to do a little store and give you some links on some stuff that, you know, that we're using, tools, and you're going to see these Gen 8 brackets. We're going to do some things like that. So you'll see some changes here coming soon. Don't forget we are a member of the Geeks Network. Head out there to thegeeksnetwork.com for more podcasts. Just like this one. Pretty close to this one anyway. But uh, good We're quality shows. We're close to this one. <laughs> good quality shows. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys. It's been, uh, what is this, episode 253. And uh, we'll see you again here next week. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for having us. All right. Thanks, guys. Audio's off. All right. Video's rolling. Thanks, everybody, for uh, all the viewers out there on uh, G Plus and YouTube. Um, we're going to be switching over. We're not really stopping. We're switching over to another crew, and uh, we're going to be at surfacegeeks.net. So if you go out to surfacegeeks.net, there's a live link at the top. You can click there. The uh, it, It's going to be confusing because the chat will still roll at homeservershow.com, but the video is going to turn on at surfacegeeks.net. That's just how it works. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Dave. And like I said in yeah. uh, in the in the uh, the PMs, John, if there's, you come up with anything, just let me know, and we'll get uh, I'll get the uh, the Maven out, and maybe we need to do a hyper yeah. episode. Yeah, it would be good if you uh, if you can you know contact this guy and see if he's got some good uh, you know audio hardware and if he's a good talker, you know, and if he, he might be like, uh, my name is you know, then you're like, okay, thanks, now. Yeah, <laughs> but, no. uh, great software. Uh, back to, back to your basement. Back to, yeah, get back to their <laughs> programming. So, uh, yeah, if he's a, you know, because sometimes it's like you're a little, some, uh, I, not you, but I mean, I feel like sometimes you're, I'm a little intimidated to ask these guys. You know, you talk about their product, like Brian Binnerup in my movies. You know, it would be cool to have him on the podcast. He's been on the Ian Dixon's podcast a mm -hmm. few times. And now that he's in the the version 5 thing, so maybe he, he'll be uh, interested in getting on the podcast. And yeah. uh, I mean, I like that. I, I like that add-in because, well, I like my movies because it was because basically it was one of the first add-ins to come out, and it's a very robust, full-featured add-in, you know, through Windows Home Server. I have a small collection, you know. This is why I, I won't spend the hundred dollars there it costs to go and get the the license key to unlock everything and all of that. There, I don't have enough uh, to justify for the for the collection I have, but yet it's uh, it's a nice it's nice to play around with. So uh, when Tony Rayner gets back, I think he's moving or something or whatever. He said he was he was on Jim's podcast and he was saying how you know he has his i7 and this and that and hopefully he'll be testing uh, more. And uh, you 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 have a license, right? You you're running. Uh, you, I you said before it. you rip it. Yeah, yeah. I you rip it some stuff. I, I like it. I really do like it. So. 
Did you buy the apps for the iPad and all of that? I think I bought. I think I bought iPad. Yes, I did. Yeah, I think you because talked about once the remote because it has a built-in. The remote boys were in, flipping you know. through it and were able to, yeah, to launch movies. And you know, now that they found Netflix, yeah. Now they don't even know what a DVD is anymore. Yeah, you gotta yeah, go, yeah. Dave. You got another show ahead of you. I do. All right. Thanks. Yep. Take care. Bye bye. Right. See you guys. Bye. Thank you, Chris. Night. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. See you next week.